Hello everyone and welcome to Boundless Dentistry. In this video we'll talk about causes or you can say factors that are associated with impaction of third molar. Firstly we'll start with a brief introduction about third molar's eruption times and some important pointers about it and then we'll move towards our main objective of, of this video that is what are the factors or causes that lead to impaction of the third molar of maxilla and mandible. So let's get started. So, mandibular or maxillary third molars are usually and normally the last teeth that erupt in the oral cavity. Normally their eruption time is around 17 to 25 years of age. Between this time period anywhere they can erupt in the oral cavity. Okay. The bud of the third molar is generally seen if you take a panoramic radiograph of a child at the age of 6. You can see the bud of the third molar either maxilla or mandible at six years of age you can see the bud of the third molar that it is either it is present or not present because in some cases it can be absent congenitally as well so it helps to see whether the third molar is present or not now talking about eruption sequence eruption sequence basically means how the third molar takes its respective position in the oral cavity now in this diagram on your right hand side of your screen you can see the in this case the mandibular third molar it starts its eruption in the horizontal location you can see how horizontally it's initially placed and as it moves and takes a mesoangular position now its mesoangular position in respect to the second molar it's present so it's present mesially or it's angled mesially that's why it's called as mesoangular position it moves in a mesoangular position and if there is no hindrance over here it then finally takes its vertical position and it's totally erupted in the oral cavity and you can clinically see it so the third molar starts horizontally then it moves in a mesoangular position and then finally in a vertical position so this is known as the eruption sequence how the third molar starts and finally if there is no hindrance appears in the oral cavity now there are many causes or factors that are associated that might lead to the impaction of third molars. These are some of the common ones and there are some very rare ones but it's not that important to talk about. So some of the common causes that are associated with impaction of third molar is lack of space in the jaws, increased crown size, abnormal bud position, failure of rotation and genetics. So let's talk about it one by one. Now talking about lack of space, the third molars as we have talked before are the last teeth to appear in the oral cavity. So this normally leads to decrease in space that is available for the third molars to erupt in the oral cavity. So as you can see here is the first molar, this is the second molar and you can see only this much space is available in the jaw for this third molar to erupt. So there is lack of space in the jaw. This, uh, this is mostly because they are the last teeth to erupt. So the teeth anterior to the third molar, they have adjusted the, themselves in the available space. And the little space that is available, it, that is accommodated to the third molar and it is not sufficient for them to erupt. So this then leads to impaction and it hits the either ramus or the second molar or it remains in the bone. So due to lack of space in the jaw, the third molar then leads to impaction. This can also happen in maxilla with the same phenomena. So the third molars are last teeth to erupt and in most of the cases the lack of space is mostly due to small jaw size. The jaw size is small that's why there is not sufficient space for the third molar to erupt and this finally then leads to impaction. Now the second cause that might lead to impaction is increased crown size. Now in this case you can see here is the first molar then here is the second molar and you can see the third molar because the third molar is very variable not only its crown but its roots are also very variable in its anatomy so we cannot predict how the anatomy will of the third molar will be unless we see it radiographically so in this case you can see how the crown of the third molar is wider mesiodistally and if the crown size was normal there is sufficient space that is available for it to erupt but since 
the crown is of larger size than the normal the eruption will be hindered in this case and it will either hit the second molar or hit the ramus uh, or Im be impacted in the bone and, and then leading to impaction so the crown size is larger and so finally then it leads to impaction the third cause that might lead to impaction of the third molar of either maxilla or mandible is abnormal tooth bud position now the tooth is surrounded by a bud it it develops in a bud and normally these buds are present in their respective position but sometimes the bud is not present in its normal position so in this case when the bud is not present in its normal position it will erupt in an abnormal location or might not even erupt so in this case you can see the first molar and second molar are present in the normal position but this third molar bud is not present in its normal position so there is no space or no direction for it to erupt so it will be impacted so bud is away from its normal position so then it finally leads to its impaction uh, previously we have talked about the eruption sequence that the third molar takes to erupt in the oral cavity in this case the fourth cause that might lead to impaction is failure of rotation failure of rotation simply means that in this eruption sequence there is some hindrance for example the third molar is erupting in a horizontal sequence so when it's moving horizontally it can either be hindered by the second molar or for or for example in a mesoangular direction when it is moving normally it can be either hindered by this ramus or the second molar and in sometimes even vertically the third molar can be impacted by being partially embedded inside the ramus so in either of these three steps the hindrance can occur anywhere which leads to impaction so either in horizontally when the tooth is moving or in the mesoangular direction or in the vertical at any of these three stages if there is any hindrance it will lead to impaction of the third molar either in the mandible or in the maxilla so there is in this case there is no proper rotation from the horizontal to the vertical direction there is some hindrance which is leading to impaction now now talking about the last cause that is genetics now we are all aware that genes control every cell organ organ system of our body so same is the case with the oral cavity the size of maxilla mandible and tooth is controlled by these genes so if there is any deviation from the normality in any of these three cases there will be impaction so for example if the maxilla is small and the tooth is large there will be impaction and same is the case with mandible if for example the mandible is small and the tooth is large there will be impaction it can be vice versa as well so genes control the size of jaw as well as the size of tooth so if there is any deviation from the normality it will then lead to impaction so this was all about the different causes of factors that are associated with impaction of a third molar either in the mandible or in the maxilla so i hope this video was useful for you and if you like this video please like share and subscribe and hit the bell icon and thank you for watching this video